second quarter of today's game brought to you by the McDonough Girls Lacrosse Camp. Go to www.mcdonough.org and learn about their tremendous girls lacrosse camp opportunity directed by McDaniel head coach Muffy Bliss. Bennett Bradley comes up with the loose ball and we see Mikey Wynn back in the game for the St. Paul's Crusaders as predicted. And I hate to say it this way, but he's just too good to get hurt. Well, you're absolutely <laughs> right. He's, uh, as I mentioned, a huge part of the offense and like seeing him, you know, make that hustle play and that ride and get injured and really shoot right back up. Not let his teammates down. Conrad and Jackson. Jackson going against Bennett Moore. Jackson gets it back. Looking diagonal there for Conrad, but St. Paul's playing the passing lanes quite well. Here's McNamara against Wood. Inside feed, no dice intended for Jack Lombardo. But the Crusaders here now, it's McGovern wheeling. Gets it up to Mikey Wynn, back to McGovern. Shot off the leg of Loyola defenseman number 10, Mike Fragi. St. Paul's comes up with a big ground ball. And this could lead to something, and it does. Credit the finish to Liam Anderson, but a great ground ball on the far sideline. And St. Paul's goes back ahead, three to two, 10.34 to go. Second quarter, second quarter brought to you by the McDonough Girls Lacrosse Camp. Demilia and O'Toole, a pre-whistle violation against O'Toole. And St. Paul's has solved a little bit of that face-off challenge. Connor Sheehan now back in the game, complimented by Jack Pollard. Oh, little desk pop on the pass. And a great ground ball pickup again. Devin McNamara quickly becoming the Under Armour underclass elite star of the game. Great chase defense, and it's back in the hands of Connor Sheehan. Ty, we talk all the time about the importance of those tryouts for the Under Armour underclass team. Yes, very important, Booker. Always an excellent event, even those tryouts. Really makes sense if you're looking to play college across or really just become a better player. Head out there, try out, you got nothing to lose. And as I always say, it's a great way to measure yourself against the best in your area. 10 regions of the country represented boys and girls. Go to underarmorlacrosse.com and find out how you can become a part of the best high school lacrosse event, bar none. 9.20 left, second quarter. St. Paul's ahead, three to two. Conrad getting pressured all the way out at the midfield line. And you see the poise of Ryan Conrad, just a sophomore, but all that time he spent on the first midfield last year, paying off now. Inside shot, goal. Ryan Conrad clicks it inside, and Alex Rosner finishes it. We are tied up at three. Nice vision shown there by Conrad. Puts him at three points already. Passing the ball over to fellow sophomore Alex Rosner. An early commit to University of Pennsylvania. Nice finisher inside. That's his bread and butter right there. University of Pennsylvania coach Mike Murphy. One of my favorite people. As is Colgate head coach Mike Murphy. Flag flies, and St. Paul's will gain the man advantage as Mason Witzler, the junior. And ball scooped up by A.C. Newton. And we will learn of the foul. This penalty brought to you by RipNet. Go to rip.net and learn how you can be a part of the great free 
social media platform designed to make you a better goal scorer, rip.net. 30-second foul, a hold against Loyola. St. Paul's first man up of the day, 3-3, three, three, a jumble around on the crease and now get a roll off. Balance into a 2-3-1, five seconds in the foul. Mikey Wynn pushes it down the wing. And the Crusaders up top. Mikey Wynn shot, save Newton. AC Newton tracking one that the whole way. Wynn probably not very happy with himself there. Not the greatest shot location. But Newton, a very good goalie. See some of the skill there by Bennett Bradley. And he gets it to Conrad. Conrad stings the corner. Takes it for a stroll right down the center of the D. Great play by Ryan Conrad. Puts the Dons up 4-3. Sort of funny, Booker. There's been a lot of discussion in the Lax Power Forums this week about Conrad's play, knowing that he was in the first line last year. And he's probably shutting a few people up with yeah. his performance so far. 2-2. Two and two. Doing a really good job getting through the defense. Amelia still doing a dominant job at the faceoff logo. And St. Paul's will take a timeout, 735 remaining second quarter. Second quarter brought to you by McDonough Girls Lacrosse Camp. Go to www.mcdonough.org to learn how you can participate and get your young lacrosse gal into and at the next level of play beginners, intermediates, and advanced. Directed by McDaniel head coach Muffy Bliss. Absolutely tremendous camp opportunity. It runs June 24th to the 28th. Go to McDonough.org and register now. Crusaders come out of the timeout. Give possession to Greg Luzon. Thrilled with his play between the restraining lines. Shot goal, Greg Luzon. Oh, look at my baby's muscles. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. An absolute muscle play. And just like that, Loyola taking a strong 5-3 lead, scored three goals in less than 90 seconds. Not too bad. <laughs> and when you say 5-3 lead, you mean tied 4-4. I, uh, fa I, went here, it, yeah. I, I, I went here and I failed math. Yeah. A lot of so. people pronounce it differently. I think you're dead on. You called me. It's just a, an accent. It's just a, a little bit of that Baltimore accent. Carry See, I, I was doing some bad math at first, you know? <laughs> you got me. And if you and can't I, I bet, fun, I bet, not doing it. I bet if uh, you hadn't said anything, people would be watching this broadcast saying, who is this Ty Zanders guy? I really can't do math. I haven't looked at the scoreboard all game. But you got my back, Booker. I do, I do. Three goals in 90 seconds. Loyal offense doing a really good job. I think they were relatively dormant on Friday against McDonough, only scoring six goals. But now four goals midway through the second quarter. That's a good sign. Pass bounces over. Jackson scoops it. Nordberg not sure he was looking for Jackson on that one. But as we say, Columbus wasn't look, exactly looking for America, my man. That seemed to work out for everybody. I mean, you're here, right? St. Paul's number 34, not listed on the roster. Shot off the top post, crossbar. We are going to investigate and find out who number 34 is. I think it's Casey Powell. I think that they have put a wig on him, shaved him up closely, and that's why he's not listed in the program. It's not Gary Gate because Gary's a little taller than that. 
Conrad coming down low to try and get it from Newton. Newton, long pass. Trouble. Absolutely the crush there. Crush, but refs, and I, I think rightfully so, kind of kept the flags in their pockets there as now we get the high flag. Referee Ian Faith. I don't know what the record is for height and distance on a flag throw, but we're gonna enter that one into the CUDA archives and we will let you know if that is a record. Five twenty-nine remaining here. Second quarter, four to four, but the Crusaders on the man up. Casey Powell starting with the ball. A lot of off ball motion right here by the Crusaders. A diagonal pass, Mikey Wynn's gonna feel this. Oh, great recovery defense, but Casey Powell slings it. Here's, we do not have a number 34 on the roster, so me and Booker are scratching our heads out I here. I see a 33, Hank Ford. He's somebody. Yeah, and I see 35 is Avery Rand. And there's now a five in the score, but I'm feeling a little bit better. Yeah. It's not 5-3, it's 5-4, 5-11 left in the first half, but there is a five on one side of the scoreboard. That's what counts. And a tool, quick win, face off, fast break. Off the top of Lowen's stick there. Lucky, unlucky bounce rather. And it looked like he caught just enough of it to keep it from going out of bounds, but a great ground ball to St. Paul's defense. Very slick. Henry Real taking it for a spin behind, guarded by Vic Licata. Just wide by McGovern. Andrew Nelson with the nifty flip. Promotional consideration brought to you by BD Diagnostics. Go to BD.com to learn how you can. Oh, great spin around. Crease violation. Quick restart, and the Dons with the running clear. Nice spin move, but unfortunately for him, he lost his balance, got the crease violation as Bretto makes that quick save there and fast break. And again, you see those hotly contested ground balls. Michael Mayer comes out with it, looks to the open man on the far side. And that clear by Witt Schweitzer. And we're going to get a timeout here by Coach Rick Bracato of the St. Paul's Crusaders. 3.47 to go second quarter. Check out that McDonough Girls Lacrosse Camp. McDonough Summer Program is a proud sponsor of the CUDA.com Game of the Week. Go to McDonough.org to learn how you can participate in the Girls Lacrosse Camp that is going to help take your game to the next level, ladies. Directed by McDaniel Head Coach Muffy Bliss. And of course, BD Diagnostics. Go to BD.com to learn how you can take advantage of all their physical health benefits. BD.com, proud sponsor of CUDA. Mikey Wynn starts with it for the Crusaders. Quickly down to Liam Anderson. Anderson misses a little bit on the flip. Luzon comes up with the ground ball. And credit Mike Frazier with pressuring on the outside to disrupt that play. 3.26 to go, second quarter. Shot just wide, and you see David St. Hubbins driven to the turf there. I don't know whether he tripped over an 18-inch replica of Stonehenge or was just getting out of the way of that shot. Loose ball flung into the inside, pinballs around, and who's the pinball wizard coming up with this one? Well, you're only getting a great effort by Mike Mayer. Moore 
relative of Joe Muir. I'll get it. And I've known Joe Muir since he was a freshman at McDonough. So. And here's Mike Muir. Jackson touches it in, and Coach Crawford's going to use his final time out of the half. 2.42 remaining, 5-4 to four year score. St. Paul's in the lead. Booker Corrigan and Ty Zanders bringing you the game of the week. And a thousand apologies to the Muir family. I just looked down at it and couldn't get it. My bad. We all make mistakes. It's how you recover from them that may set you apart, Ty. I made one. So Yeah. We're all human. <laughs> we're good people. You also usually, spent the night up there. So. They usually follow a good night. Tim Norbrook starts with it for the Don Diegos. They trail by one late first half and an errant pass. Ball just inches from the sideline. And now we get the call. Ryan Conrad lobbying hard to get it. But the ball's awarded over to St. Paul's and McGovern has it up top center. Alex McGovern one of the stars of their win over Hill Academy and Haverford School. Last time we had the pleasure of covering St. Paul's on CUDA. McGovern shoots, scores. It's just that karma that I bring, my God. And for me, it's usually the broadcaster's jinx, but you seem to yeah. bring good luck whenever you're talking about a yeah. player out there and they happen to score or get a big round ball or something. Alex McGovern driving behind the cage, executing the five Ds of dodging. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. And as my friend Patches O'Houlihan would say, if you want to succeed on an invert, you just got to grab it by the haunches and hump it into submission. And he certainly makes good on that one. Six four Crusaders, late first half. Conrad up top gets it over to Nordbrook. And I got to tell you, Ryan Conrad is the patches of Houlihan of this Loyola offensive team. Shot Maybe just wide. Egg McMuffin of midfielders. That's Bones Kelly. He's Bones. the Egg McMuffin of faceoff guys. I'm but cheating he, here. Yeah, he's such a good, oh, great trail check by Michael Mayer. Ball pops up in the air. We get an interference call. And the ball's awarded over to the Crusaders. And now they're wheeling it. Connor Sheehan finds the cutting Jack Pollard. Pollard into the traffic and a flag flies. New rule this year where they have the continuation. Great dodge to the cage, ball out of bounds. This man up brought to you by RipNet. Go to rip.net and sign up for the free social media goal scoring app, free for your iPhone or Android. Find out what Grant Catalino, Billy Bitter, Ned Crotty, find out what they're all talking about. Mark Matthews, that great goal scorer from Denver, they all love rip.net. A one minute foul against the Dons. And this is a imperative man down kill as they can ill afford to go down by three. Shot just high and wide, good ball movement. Liam Anderson with the shot, gets it for Mikey Wynn. And the restart by Carter Flagg. and rip to describe that. 31 seconds left in the half, and the Crusaders go up by three. And right away, you see Coach Bracado going to that second attack unit. That's how you build a program. Sends him out and then pulls him back because he knows he's got a full man up base off. Always been impressed that St. Paul's EML unit, even 
you know, past five to ten years seem to finish with precision. Devin McNamara diagonal. Oh, what a save on the inside by Barreto. AJ Barreto stealing one for the Crusaders. And they now have 15 seconds left on the man up opportunity. Michael Muir putting some pressure on the defense. High pass intended on the backside for Liam Anderson. And they have six seconds left here on the man up. Loyola, if they're able to maintain possession. And Michael Mayer will finish. No, he won't. Gets it to Mikey Wynn, shot wide. And we will face it off unless they declare that goaltender AC Newton was close enough and there was a, still a half a tick on the clock. Then it would be Loyola Ball. But what do I know? It's my first lacrosse game. I feel like I'm adjusting to it fairly well. CUDA.com bringing you great MIAA action as well as all over the Mid-Atlantic region. Seven to four year score at halftime. McDonough Girls Lacrosse Camp, a proud sponsor of the CUDA.com Game of the Week. Go to www.mcdonough.org to learn how you can sign your young lady up and help her get to the next level of great lacrosse. And also a huge thank you to BD Diagnostics for all your personal health needs. Go to BD.com to learn more. I hope that both of these teams are going to be getting their motive fuel at halftime because it is a hot day here at Two Live Field. We'll be back with the second half right after this. <laughs> 